Hi guys, this video is about the new Nissan Leaf price list, which I managed to get hold of just over a week ago. I thought I'd do a little video about it, listing the prices, the trim levels, what it comes with, and at the end, I think it deserves a bit of a rant. I should point out that the prices that I will be quoting are after the £4,500 government grant, and I do not have any PCP prices at this time, that's probably a few weeks away. So we might as well start at the bottom end, the Vizier spec, which in this case is pretty much poverty spec. I mean, they've really, really dumbed this one down of Nissan. I won't go through the full spec list. Obviously, you know, it comes with things like tyres and windows and uh, things that they tend to specify, like chrome door handles. I'm going to ignore all that type of thing and just kind of stick with the main points. So the Vizier comes with 16-inch steel wheels, electrically adjustable but manual folding, a cruise control speed limiter, light and rain sensors, the seats are a black knit fabric, so I'm not entirely certain what they will be about. And you do not get the Nissan Connect infotainment unit, nor, I believe, is it a touch screen. So you've got pretty basic audio in there, no touch screen. I'm guessing no sat nav, because it doesn't mention Nissan Connect. It does come with the e-pedal, uh, four speakers on the audio, and the standard charging options, which for all new leaves are the 6.6 charging speed. None of them come with 3.3 in the UK. 6.6 .6 is the minimum. So we've obviously removed Nissan Connect, dumbed down the infotainment system, uh, giving you a few analog controls and I think if there is no Nissan Connect that means you won't be able to preheat the car via the app. It does come with the timer so you can set the time on there to come on at whatever time in the morning but I don't think you'll be able to do it via your mobile phone. And whilst we're on the subject of the heater, the Vizier, believe it or not, comes with the old PTC heater, which is basically the old inefficient heater, which they phased out of the 30 kilowatt hour version of the Leaf, because that started at a center trim spec. The only options appear to be the front and rear parking sensors and a uh, spare wheel. Now the center, which for me is pretty much the standard basic spec you're probably wanting to go for, comes with all the things I've mentioned. However, it does come with the proper, normal, efficient heat pump, which should be standard in my eyes. It also comes with 16 inch alloys and fog lights, electric folding mirrors, a recycled woven fabric seats with a leather steering wheel and switches. You also get intelligent cruise control, which I can only assume means it has radar guided. I'm not sure about that. Cruise control is cruise control, intelligent cruise control. I don't know about the difference, so I'm assuming it's some sort of uh, radar guided, you know, that's on many other cars out there, but until I actually get in one, I can't really verify that. You get a couple of more speakers on the audio, and you do get Nissan Connect, which I assume comes with all the usual stuff like sat-nav, the app, um, full touch screen, and you also get a, uh, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Options are a heat pack, which is £200, which is heated seats and heated leather steering wheel, and for £250 you can have front and rear parking sensors. We then move on to the N Connect, which for me is a kind of pointless spec, I'll explain more later. That is, as the centre is, only comes with 17 inch alloy wheels. Uh, you get privacy glass. The B pillar is gloss black. Uh, but you also get front and rear heated seats, although it's a little bit vague on that one, and a heating steering wheel as standard, whereas it's an optional extra on the centre. It also comes with moving object detection. Now, I always thought these were your eyes, but this must be some sort of technology that built into it. Intelligent driver alertness and parking sensors are also standard on the N Connect, and the optional extras are the LED pack, which is LED headlights, and uh, signature daytime running lights. You can also go for two tone paint for 350 quid. The LED pack is also 350 pound, by the way, and you can get the Pro Pilot as an option, which is 400 pound. That's Pro Pilot, not Pro Pilot Pack. And we finally get onto the Techna, which is obviously the top spec. That comes with all of that, including the intelligent auto headlights with full LED, uh, the full leather heated seats, I'm presuming front and rear, uh, and synthetic door trim leather. You also get the Bose Audio Premium 7 speakers. It comes with ProPilot Standard, but not ProPilot Park. That is a £400 option. Two-tone paint is £350 optional extra, and you also get the e-parking brake. Now, the prices are as follows. The Vizier is £21,990. The Ascenta is 24,290, the N Connect is 25,990, and the Techna 
is 27,490. So what beef do I have with all this? Uh, well, to be honest, it's mainly due to the spec level and a bit of cynical marketing. It's not unique to Nissan in any way. Lots of uh, car manufacturers do this, but it has kind of irked me a little bit. They make a big deal about saying it's now 300 pounds cheaper than they are going leaf. It ain't quite true really, is it? The 30 kilowatt hour leaf came in a center spec as a minimum. This now comes in Vizier spec with older technology for some of it, so it's not really comparable for me. Yes, it's got the bigger range, but it's got a heater, which I, I don't know why on an all new, all singing, dancing, uh, you know, full of technology car, do they put such a basic heater in? It drops the winter range. It means that every time we talk to somebody about an electric car who's never had one before, you have to go, well, it's got a realistic range of about 150 odd miles. Apart from the Vizier spec, which in winter will probably be about 120 odd miles. You'd think just for ease of production line, they'd, they'd scrap it completely and put the heat pump only in, which is what they did with the previous Leaf. They've stripped this and connect out of it, no sat nav, no remote heating via your app. I mean, you look on Twitter, me included, there's loads of people during this cold winter saying it's brilliant having an electric car, I can pre-eat my car whilst I'm having breakfast and I don't have to worry about scraping my car down like all my neighbours. It's a big thing, it's a big bonus in winter when you own an electric car and they're stripped out of the Vizier. Coupled with a sat nav, coupled with a lack of touchscreen, coupled mainly with the heater means that I cannot recommend I would not go for the Vizier at all I think it's a pointless specification that just exists for the headline of it's cheaper than the old model the true entry level price and spec of the 40 kilowatt hour leaf is the Ascenta which is 2300 pounds more than the Vizier so you're looking at 24 290 if you're going for a new leaf in my opinion I wouldn't go for the Vizier for the heater alone factoring all the other things that you're missing out on as well it's just not worth it for me Another oddity is the N-Connect. I don't see why that exists. It's £1,700 more than the Ascenta, but it comes with things which are kind of pointless, really. For, again, in my opinion, 17 inch wheels instead of 16. All that does is reduce the efficiency a little bit, make the ride slightly crashier, uh, but it might look a bit nicer. Privacy glass can be useful if you've got kids in the back, but again, not a deal breaker. B-pillar gloss black. Ooh, ooh. Heated seats. I like that, that will be nice, but it's an optional extra on the Ascenta, so might as well just add it onto there. The way I see it, there are two types of leaf buyers. One that wants one as cheap as possible, but realistically is going to end up going for the Ascenta. And then one that just wants the Pro Pilot, you know, all the spec, the techno lover, if you like, and they're going to go to the other end. So the Vizier is pointless for me, and the Inconnect is kind of pointless. Kind of like in the olden days, should I say, when you used to do a 1.6, a 1.8 and a 2 litre engine. You either went for the 1.6 or the 2 litre. The 1.8 was kind of, you know, who got that? Why? Why would you do that? So for me, I'd either go for the Ascenta or the Techno. If you want all the toys, if you're, you're licking your butthole on YouTube. I should explain that uh, my usual spot I cannot do because my daughter's in bed, my wife's got the car at work with her, so I'm kind of confined to the settee here, hence the new uh, surroundings. Bye bye. So yeah, in my mind it's a cynical ploy by Nissan to make it look cheaper, when in reality no one's going to probably go for the Vizier. Let me know out there if you would go for the Vizier, bear in mind the stuff you're going to end up missing and going back in time with the heat pump thingy. I'd be curious to know if anyone out there would actually do that. Also let me know if you go for the Pro Pilot Park and you know the full on Techna package, which ultimately if you factor all that in would end up costing you 27,890 quid, which is a lot for a, a basically a facelifted leaf. I don't know, I'm not signed one, I've not driven one. It's gonna be interesting to know how good it is. I know it's basically the same car as that I have just with the bigger battery and a different interior, but the uh, prices obviously have gone up somewhat since the last one. Now hopefully in the next few weeks we'll have the PCP prices so we can compare them to the 30 kilowatt hour. I would imagine, even though Nissan are saying this is cheaper than the outgoing, that due to the ridiculous way they were discounting the previous Leafs, this one in monthly terms will be a fair bit more expensive. Even poverty spec will probably be dearer. So yeah, as I said, let me know what you think. I personally think a nearly new 30 kilowatt hour Techna will be a better proposition at a significantly cheaper price than the 40 
this year. From someone who owns a 30 kilowatt hour Leaf now, I don't see this as a, a good upgrade. Not for the price they're asking. If you've not got an electric car right now, I'm sure it will be a cracker. So let me know what you think again, and I will see you soon.